Welcome to this episode of Crap No One Tells You. With me today is Caleb from Core 3 Physical Therapy. And uh, he's going to tell us about some of the crap no one tells you about the physical therapy industry. So, oh, well, welcome. Uh, yeah, oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, to get it out of the way to start, how much cursing is allowed on this <laughs> podcast? We don't discourage it, but we don't encourage it either. Okay. All right. I, I, we I are assuming that young adults are going to be listening. I, so. I can live with that. Okay. So what is some crap no one tells you about physical therapy? Uh, there, there's a lot. There, there's a lot to go into. Um, one of the biggest ones is the, the lack of quality of physical therapy out there. And it, it kind of pains me to say that as a physical therapist. Mm -hmm. um, I, I own my own company, a uh, uh, quick plug, we're, we're located in Hatfield, <laughs> Chalfont, East Norton, and soon to be Limerick, and we're, we're looking for young PTs who, who want to work and do an excellent job, but there, there's my plug. Um, but, you, you know, you, uh, you've gone to physical therapy before. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time you go, you get kind of the same exercises that everybody else does, the same stretches. You know, maybe a therapist is with you, maybe they're not. You, you hand in your little exercise sheet at the end, and, and then there you go. And, and that is... I'd say 90% of our profession, and it, it, it kind of, it, it's shameful, almost. <laughs> um, and it, 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 again, it, it hurts for me to say that. But is it the same 90% of exercises because it's the same ailments that... No, because they're, they're similar ailments, yeah, definitely. Okay. I mean, your back pain is your number one, right? right. You know, your back pain, hip pain, neck knee pain, pain neck yeah. pain, yeah, stuff like that. So they're, they're going to give you the same... Stretches. They're they're the same ones because they're easy to do. Um, they're not going to harm you, um, and and everybody can do it. Okay. Um, we've really tried to, and and I guess what I want to get out there, the stuff that nobody tells you that, that there is a different way. There, there's there's different care out there, but you have to seek it. And and unfortunately, even the providers themselves don't know about it. And that's something that my company is really trying to change. Um, and the different care out there is we, we look at you differently. When you, when you come in, whatever body part you're coming in for, shoulder, elbow, wrist, hip, knee, foot, and ankle, mm -hmm. um, we mm -hmm. look at your spine first and foremost because we have strongly found a correlation from the pain that you're having in your periphery, you know, again, your shoulder, elbow, knee, right. whatever. Um, it's actually coming from your back, coming from your spine. And, and when you think about it, Logically, it makes sense, but nobody looks at it this way. And and doing this, you know, you, you go to PT and it's they want you to go two to three times a week for eight to 12 weeks. And, you know, you'll basically get better almost over time. Like your body will just heal and the PT's basically getting you to not get in your own way. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, we want people to get better that session. You know, we want we want to see a change that session in the session and and. Often we do, I'd say, you know, 80, 90% of the time. So like the very first time I come in, you want to see improvement by the time I leave. Yeah. If you're in an eight out of 10 pain when you come in, uh, you know, we, it's not like we shoot for, but I, I want to see it drop at least half. Okay. Um, I want to see if you can't turn your neck more than 40 degrees one way, I, I want to see that improve by 20, 30 degrees one session. And that's not something most physical therapists almost, do? Almost any. Yeah. Okay. Almost any physical therapist. There, there's a small subgroup named McKenzie physical therapists who they do a good job and they, they actually look at you this way as well. Okay. They don't go, we do more mobilizations, manipulations, stuff like that. Um, they don't really do any hands-on stuff. Um, so that's where we're a little different, but they'll, they'll look at you in the same vein of if it's your shoulder, they'll look at your neck first. If it's your knee, they'll look at your back first. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and again, they're very successful in this. But and I don't understand why it's not widely adopted in my profession. Well, isn't that the same thing as the medical industry? You have an expert for for every area of your body, but you have very few that look at you as a whole. Sure. Yeah. And and, and it's even it's even kind of beyond this, too. So the, maybe the big thing that I wanted to get out there, the stuff that nobody tells you <laughs> that, that there's a there's a different approach for some of your non orthopedic conditions. Um, I have two real good examples. Okay. Uh, one is Crohn's. Okay. So, you know, Crohn's, again, we look at your back. We, mm -hmm. and um, so we had this young 27 year old female. She's a runner. She's getting ready to get married. She's had Crohn's disease since she was 18. She's had symptoms since she was 15, you know, diagnosed at 18. 
she was hospitalized three separate times because of her condition. Um, she's had multiple imaging procedures, uh, medications, long-term steroid use. Eventually, she gets put on Humira, um, with basically an anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. drug that she has to self-inject her, herself. Um, uh, it's every other week, it, but she had to get special approval, uh, FDA approval or insurance approval, whatever, to do it once a week because her symptoms were so bad. Wow. She came in um, because she heard that I was that our clinic uh, has a little bit of a different way of looking at people. So she came in and I evaluated her and found that an area of her spine that that correlates with her, you know, intestines, her stomach mm -hmm. uh, was painful and not moving. So we started working on that. Within five weeks, she had stopped her Humira 100%. Um, it's been about, I think it's been about almost six months now. She's 100% symptom free. She's no longer taking any medication, no Humira, um, and she's she's doing well. And it's so that was all because of a spinal all because issue of her spine, in her But case. it was diagnosed as Crohn's, and and I'm wondering. I'm sure there. I'm sure there is Crohn's. I'm sure there's an inflammatory oh, yeah. condition, but I'm also sure that there's people out there that have the same problem she had. That they're getting treated for Crohn's because. They we, have all the symptoms they have all the of symptoms, that. And we don't have another box to put you in, <clears throat> in a medical field. We, you have these symptoms. You fit in this box. This <clears throat> is how we're treating you. And so they're, they're the crap that nobody tells you is that we have a different box for you. We, we look at your spine for these non-typical orthopedic issues, and um, we've had some great results. So in her case... You said she was a runner and all that stuff. So is that an injury that could have happened over time, or is that something she was born with? Or no, it's it's almost an always an overtime thing. You, okay. you know, depending on what you do, everybody overuses their body, but they overuse it in a different <laughs> way. You can even overuse it sitting. You right. know, if you sit and we're at a, at a computer and we're leaning forward, you're overusing your upper upper neck or your lower neck, upper back. Um, but yeah, for running, she easily could have just pissed off her spine. I can say piss off, right? <laughs> right yes. uh, she pissed off her spine running. Um, and then it just kept getting worse and worse. Right. They took her to the doctor. She's having stomach pain. So the doctor looks at your stomach. Right. Right. Which is reasonable, but you have to rule out the spine and, and nobody does this. Nobody out there does this. <laughs> and it's so simple. It's, it's simple. It's easy. Uh, and it's, it's effective and it's effective without medication. Um, mm -hmm. and not only that, it's lasting. It's 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 a right. cure, whereas your medication is, is a stopgap at best. It's, it's, uh, it's relieving. Masking. It's relieving symptoms. Treating the symptoms, not right. treating the cause. So I got to ask, how did you get into this industry? Like, what made you wake up one day and go physical therapy? That's it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's it's not a good answer. Uh, my roommate at college was a physical was a physical therapy major. I was originally pre med, and uh, I've ha I've played sports my entire life, so I've had my aches and pains, and I've always been interested in the the physical aspect of it. Um, but the, the real answer is my roommate was pre, uh, physical therapy. And I was like, yeah, fine. All right. If I'm not going to be pre-med, I'll, I'll do that. So why did you drop out of pre-med? Because this was more interesting or just because? <laughs> yeah, no, ironically, <laughs> because the, uh, the, the medical profession, I looked at all my friends that had doctors as mothers or fathers and they were never home and the divorce rate. So I'm like, all right, I want a better quality of life. Right. But then I spent the last seven years working 100-hour weeks starting my own company and, <laughs> oh. and and going to all these continuing education courses, right. I, I might as well have just been a doctor. But yeah, no, that's part of what comes with starting your own business is you get, so you chose that, right? I cho you're right, right. So I, it was <laughs> so, something that wasn't thrust on me, right. something I chose. Um, and, and, you know, temporarily it was invigorating, right? It mm -hmm. was, you know, you're starting your own company. It's, it's, uh, it's <clears> almost <throat> like a, you, you have a little shot of vitality with it, but then... Correct. After a little while, you, that that goes away, <laughs> <laughs> and it just becomes work. <laughs> yeah, then it's work, yes. right? And then it's a lot of work. Uh, so you guys started with a single clinic, right? Mm -hmm. yes. And it was originally, if I remember correctly, just your wife and someone else, and then you joined the clinic shortly after they had opened. Correct. Yeah, I, I did not compete, so I had to I had to stay away for about seven to eight months. Okay, um, and then you were able to 
get into the practice. Then after I that. came over and um, yeah, and then I, I kind of took over as the the lead ortho. My wife uh, does pelvic floor physical therapy, so she that's her specialty. Okay. Um, um, I'm the orthopedic specialist, so she grew her part of the pelvic floor industry. And the funny thing is, uh, so we're main office was in Hatfield. That was our first office. Okay. Um, and when we first started, nobody out there offered pelvic floor physical therapy. I don't even know what it is. Yeah, so. <laughs> I, I I know so much more than I used to. Uh, a lot that I don't want to know. Okay. Um, but so nobody nobody offered it at all. Now everybody offers it around us, um, which is so infuriating because they <laughs> it, it, just first, like what I first to market isn't always <laughs> no right. <laughs> yeah, you also have to be able to 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 grow it and, and mm-hmm. weather the people growing around you. Um, uh, but they, 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 they offer it, but they don't do it right. They, they, okay. you know, they don't have private so, rooms. Or, so what is it? So pelvic floor physical therapy, it primarily it's, it's, you can call it women's health, but my wife would be mad at me if I said that because there's for male as well. So okay. after you had, uh, let's say you had a prostate issue or post prostatectomy, or, um, you had prostate cancer, um, even like some erectile dysfunction or sexual dysfunction, mm-hmm. testicular pain is a big one. And guess how we treat that? We treat your back. Um, Interesting. for women, you know, it's a lot of prolapse post, uh, postpartum. So after they've had a child or mm-hmm. while they're currently with child, um, there's a lot of other diagnoses that I, um, uh, you probably don't want me to say on the, <laughs> on the podcast <laughs> right. um, that, that I wasn't ever aware of um, okay. that we treat. Um, I don't it, think people realize, for example, childbirth is not exactly friendly to that region sure. in general. Well, and you know, other countries, <clears throat> uh, I think Germany is one where mm-hmm. it's actually, yeah, I think you get about, it's common to be in PT for about six months after that after giving childbirth. And it makes sense. If you roll your ankle, you, you know, you sprained a ligament, right. you get PT. Mm-hmm. Childbirth is, uh, from what I'm told, a little <laughs> worse than rolling your ankle. Um, but they just say, yeah, it's normal. You're going to, you're going to leak when you cough, sneeze, laugh, uh, run, jump, you know, that's normal. And, uh, you know, eventually if you have too many kids, your uterus will fall out and, um, but that's normal. <laughs> okay. And then, then we'll put a mesh in there and we'll, we'll sew you up and then you'll just have pain for the rest of your life. Um, but what you're saying is, so there's actual physical therapy to help treat 100%, some of this stuff. Yeah. Okay. And, and even, uh, so your, your stomach separates when you've, you know, you, it's bulged out for, um, a solid six months mm-hmm. of the pregnancy. So your stomach muscles, it makes sense, get, get loose. And the, um, the connective tissue actually separates. It's called a diastasis recti. Uh, there's stuff to do to fix that. Okay. Um, there's stuff to do to tell, uh, so one of the reasons we got into this, was that we, we, my wife and I, so my wife who started the company with me, the women's health now specialist, she wasn't when we had our first child. And we're going through some of the things and there's, there's nothing out there. There's, there, nobody's offering anything. Nobody's even telling you like, hey, like how to hold the baby or, and, and they'll tell you a little in the office, mm-hmm. in the hospital, but they're, they're really baby focused, uh, like caring for the baby, which as they should be. Correct. That's their job. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, but caring for the mother, caring for the baby. Like, I can't tell you how many new moms get upper back and neck pain, shoulder pain, pain down their bilateral hands, both hands, um, because they're constantly holding the child. They're constantly breastfeeding. Mm-hmm. They're bending over to pick the child up. Uh, you know, car seats suck. Uh, yes. Getting a car seat <laughs> in and out of a car is, yep. is, there's no good way to do it for your body. Um, and, and women take the brunt of this, you know, primarily mm-hmm. for breastfeeding, but in general, you know, they're the ones holding the kids more often than not. Um, and nobody tells the, the mom, hey, there's a simple exercise you can do that'll mitigate 80, 90 percent of this while you're caring for a newborn, an infant. That's interesting. Um, same thing with, you know, again, your pelvic floor, um, where it's it's now it's it's been <laughs> it's been. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're dancing around the subject. I am dancing quite a bit. <laughs> okay. Uh, but it, it's been through some stuff. Yes. Uh, and again, there's... anybody that's ever seen a childbirth in their life, right? And you don't even have to have experienced it because we're two guys sitting here talking about it. Like you see it, it looks violent. Like it's not this, is oh, it a yeah. beautiful moment? Yes. Sure. Does it look like 
a slaughterhouse. Like I hate to say it that way. Slaughterhouse is unfortunately <laughs> an apt description, right? Yeah. But, but like I, I, I've seen multiple of them, right? And I, I'm always amazed at the fact that and are the these, body. Are these your kids that you've seen, or are you? I've are seen. You just... I, I've seen my own, and um, I had a friend. Is that, this a Google search thing? No, 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 no. It, in it, person, it, being in the room. <laughs> actually seeing what happens, right? All right, right? so allowed and wanted to be there. Yes. Okay, yes. all right. So, um, but I'm always amazed at, uh, honestly, first of all, how well the body is designed to be able to do that, first of all, and then secondly, generally how well they can recover after it, right? Yeah, like, because it's, it's... Your body heals itself, right. right? But there's some things that you can do to help it. And, and why wouldn't you do that and to make sure? Because at a certain point, you might get to the point where your body can't heal itself anymore. There, there is a healing period. Mm -hmm. it, it, scar tissue lays down at, at about eight weeks after an injury, somewhere around there, eight to 10 weeks. Once scar tissue is laid down, nah, there's not a ton that you can do. You, there's right. stuff you can do, but it, it takes longer. It's more work. It's more painful. And it's, sometimes you need surg surgery to fix it. So basically... You're saying that almost after any injury, your time to make it better before it turns into scar tissue is what, about eight weeks? Yeah, somewhere around eight to 10 weeks. You you want to be... And then does it become impossible or just harder to... Harder. Okay. Harder. It, I mean, there's definitely some situations where it does become impossible, but at least without surgical intervention then or, or something more, uh, something... Um, you know, more aggressive type of care. Okay. But yeah, if, if you get ahead of it, though, it, most stuff heals very well. Um, but you have to know what you can do to fix it, to help it. And you right. also have to know what you shouldn't do to make it worse. And, and that's really where we come in. Okay. So what are some other common injuries people come and see you for? Well, so, and the common ones, this, this is crap no one tells you, right? <laughs> okay. So we, we don't want the common ones. We want, we want, you want the, the uncommon ones, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> So, so I'm, and I'm, I'm currently in the process of trying to write a book about this, about the, the uncommon care that can be that the uncommon symptoms that you wouldn't think physical therapy for. Right. Okay. Um, my, my neighbor is kind of the reason that this all started. We, we've been doing this all along. You know, a, again, you come in for your shoulder, elbow, we look at your neck, you come in for your hip or your knee, we look at your back and we're, we're very good at it where it's successful. Um, my neighbor was having a breathing problem. Um, so I, I don't know if you met him, um, but, uh, I don't want to say his name on, on air. Uh, but, uh, anyway, he's, he's a friend. I, I, I want to make fun of him, but I, I, I guess I won't. <laughs> uh, so he's having some trouble breathing. Um, and he, he does the normal route. He goes to the doctor's office. He goes to his primary mm -hmm. and the primary evaluates him and says, well, it's, it's probably some asthma and I'm going to send you to, uh, you know, a pulmon pulmonologist, respiratory specialist. So he schedules, you know, two months later, he, he gets his appointment, you know, it's a long wait time. He goes, he does these breathing tests. The breathing tests actually come back better than average, um, better. Uh, and his symptoms actually get better when he exercises. But despite that, the breathing specialist said, well, yeah, it's probably asthma. Um, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna treat you with an inhaler. You know, it's probably sports induced asthma, even though him exercising made it better. Okay. It's getting worse and worse. And, and, and this guy, he can get in his head a little bit too. So he, it's getting worse and worse and it's worse at night. Um, so he's trying to sleep. He's having trouble breathing. He's basically sending himself into a panic attack here. He ends up going to the ER for it. ER set, tells him the same thing. It's probably asthma. Again, here's your box. You're having trouble breathing. There's nothing in your x-ray. There's nothing in your EKG. They're, they, they're, they're sending him to a cardiac specialist. There's nothing that we can see. So if you're having trouble breathing, you have asthma. Um, he uses the inhaler. It doesn't work. They, they didn't have anything at the ER to give him. And because he's a friend, I'm like, hey, let me take a look at you. Um, it's not my area, but let me see if there's anything from your spine that could be causing this. So I take a look at him and somewhere around his mid thoracic spine, there's some pain um, where basically where, you know, around the, where the ribs are. Um, we work on those spots a little bit. He sits up and he says for the first time, he was able to take a full breath in. I'm like, okay, well, it was interesting. So I wanted to kind of double check my work. So I, I sent him off to our clinic and I, I didn't tell the therapist I was sending him to anything. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of purposely, you know, blinded her. 
she found the exact same thing that I did. He actually, she found it more because she found that when he was in this like slumped position, like sitting upright, right. it was worse, which is kind of funny because he was also trying to treat himself for, you know, you go down this rabbit hole of Google searches. He was sitting <laughs> upright because maybe it's acid reflux at night. Right. So he's actually making it worse at home with the stuff that he's trying to find, which is, you know, funny retrospectively. Um, <laughs> It's probably not uncommon. <laughs> and, and it's not uncommon. It's funny because it's him. I, I wish I wish I could say all the, the funny <laughs> that he's, he's a good friend and I, I just want to mm -hmm. trash him on the radio. Um, but anyway, so we give him this, this exercise. He does it and he's better. When we really knew we had something was he's away for a work trip in Hawaii. Um, the One of his coworkers' wife is there with the coworker and He's telling this story and she goes, I've had the same thing. I've had this exact same thing longer than he's had it, worse than she's on breathing treatments, nothing's working. So I get her connected with the therapist that treated him. She lives in California though. Okay. So we're in Pennsylvania. Okay. The therapist here does Zoom therapy. Uh, within three sessions, she's asymptomatic, no medication. And it, it, again, it, was, and it wasn't something, it's not like we're doing anything um, so amazing. We're just looking at it differently. Correct. We're saying, hey, these people, the breathing specialists, the ER, the cardiologists, stuff that all needed to be... Um, You've got to eliminate that had first. To, right? Had to be eliminated, evaluated first. Mm -hmm. They couldn't find anything, so they slapped a diagnosis on it, and they said, you have asthma. And we said, hey, well, we can take a look at your spine and rule that out. Um, we so did you that. guys just become yet another point of elimination, so to speak. Exactly. And, and which it sounds reasonable, right? <laughs> it sounds it's, very reasonable. It's, hey, like, before we give you these injections, <laughs> before we do surgery, before we do a long course of steroids, mm -hmm. I want this guy to take a look at your spine and let me know if this could be a thing. Right. Great. That sounds very logical. <laughs> it's, it actually sounds very uh, and and it's stuff again. Nobody knows. I, I'm looking. At, I'm a, I'm a big football fan, fantasy mm -hmm. football. And you're looking at players that they're having this long term elbow issue, you know, and it's coming from your neck. And I want to scream it at the TV, especially if they're on my if they're on my team, right? right? Like Zach Ertz was having a, a calf issue that wasn't going away. Again, your body heals, and we we know mm -hmm. the healing time. Soft tissue, depending on the the tear, like a mild strain, something or something like that, you know two to three weeks, four weeks, this is going on and on and on. It's a long-term issue. These guys are having these hamstring issue, the calf issues. It's your back. It's coming from your back. And nobody's treating you. Nobody's looking at it like that. Right. But it would actually make sense. I mean, football players get their spine compressed more than All people the time. realize and back and falling over and getting hit. And like your center part of your body is taking a beating. It, it makes sense. Well, and, and again, remember, your spine innervates your muscles, your tendons. Mm -hmm. There is nothing in your body that doesn't have a nerve connection coming from your spine. So if your area of your spine, that nerve is getting pressed on, and that signal's not getting to your rotator cuff, that signal's not getting to your lat, that signal's not getting to your quad, you know, for your knee. Um, now that quad's not turning on. Now that quad's not turning on as strong, and now you suffer an injury. Now your rotator cuff isn't turning on as strong when you need it to uh, as quickly, and now you suffer an injury and you suffer an injury at that area. So we get tunnel visioned, focusing on this, your shoulder, because you had this shoulder pain, mm -hmm. on your knee, because you had this knee pain, but nobody's thinking, all right, why did this happen in the first place? And obviously there's contact injuries, you know, Correct. and, and that's, that's, that's but, a different But what you were saying is that you can eliminate those because we know there should be a certain healing time. Exactly. Right? If it doesn't heal within that time, maybe it's... Maybe it's something else. Maybe we should look elsewhere. Sure. Right? But so let me see if I understood this correctly. So what you're saying is most people know the spine basically connects everything in your body, right? But if I understood you correctly, you're saying that some of these signals are almost like a Wi-Fi signal, right? Meaning that it's not an on-off, right? It could be a, it's only getting 60% of the signal or 20%, right? Exactly. We, we use a bandwidth analogy, Okay. you know? Um, so yeah, exactly. So the signal's still getting there. When the signal's not getting there, it turns into numbness. Numbness is bad. Numbness is... Okay. Numbness is no signal. Numbness is no signal. <laughs> no Wi-Fi. The signal is... Yeah. <laughs> you, the, it's a, you're, you've turned into a dial-up modem. Okay. And you are, you are in danger of losing your internet. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> um, so numbness is bad. Tingling is that kind of like in-between. Tingling, you, you know, your, your, your cable 
now if, for, okay. the, for the people that remember, <laughs> if we're sticking with this analogy, yeah. you know. Um, you're, th you're 3G. Yeah. <laughs> like right. you can still get internet, but you're not getting on TikTok. Yeah, you, you, right. <laughs> no video. You, no streaming. <laughs> right. Um, pain is actually the best, which, which is odd. I, I would rather be numb than in pain, but pain, physiologically speaking, is your first. Pain, if you touch something hot, I pull away, it hurts. Mm -hmm. Pain's your initial response. Okay. Once that initial response gets ignored, passed on, or progresses, now it turns into numbness and tingling. It turns into weakness, um, and and now you have an issue. Uh, you had an issue beforehand, okay. but now it's now it's a real issue. So, do you think, in general, um, the utilization of physical therapy is underused? I wish I could say it is. Yes, it 100% is. But I can't even tell you where to go to get this type of treatment, which which is the right. frustrating part. Again, we're, we're talking about pros in the NFL, and their physical therapists are are stretching their hamstrings and and rubbing their legs and stuff like that. They're not looking at their spine. Um, I I wish I could Russell Wilson. If, if Russell Wilson, if you're out there, I know your lat is partly torn, but let me take a look at your okay. at your back. Uh, let let me take a look at your thoracic spine, and and we'll, let's. Let's get but you back on track. Is is this to get back to? Is this getting to the point where we have almost focused too much on individual parts of the body rather than treating it as a whole? Well, I, I love that you said that. So, so yes, absolutely. Because the, the medical field has become like hyper specialized, right? Like you have to go to the shoulder. Not you don't even go to an ortho anymore. Now you don't go to your primary anymore. Your right. primary sends you to an ortho. That ortho now might send you to. A, uh, a shoulder ortho or an elbow ortho, uh, and and again they're just they're just tunnel visioned in on that spot, and it's it's even kind of more in the medical world. You you can say be, we've gotten to the point where we now we now look into your DNA, you know, before we actually look into your your spine. We we look into your microphysiology, um, you know, your because we can. So so we're looking narrower instead of broader. Exactly. It, 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 and again, it just makes sense. You, we we've become to the point where we we want to, like what repeating ourselves. Uh, but we're so science has all almost given us the ability to narrow it down too much. It's gotten in the way a little bit because now it's not just common sense, right? right? Just common sense medicine. Um, now it's now now we're getting very micro, right? That's interesting. Yeah. So <clears throat> let's get back to business side of things. Okay. Um, you guys started with one office. You're now up to four. Soon to be four. Soon to be four. Soon okay. Be four. So as a owner of a business, because you guys grew pretty rapidly, right? Well, and, and this will actually be kind of our fifth office. We, we started in a small clinic in Hatfield. We outgrew that. We went to a bigger clinic. Then we did um, East Norton, then we did Chalfont, and now we're doing Limerick. Okay. So the business side of things, what have been some things that surprised you running your own office? Like, And again, you said no <clears throat> cursing. <laughs> no cursing, please. <laughs> you, you know, there's there's been a lot. Uh, it, it's it's hard, and, and it's come in waves. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, COVID changed a lot of stuff. Um, it, it's been... It's been cool pouring yourself into your business. Like I, I can control everything, but I also don't want to. I, I want to see the business grow organically at, at some point. I want to see people come in and take ownership of new roles in the in the in the company. Um, but I also have the ability. If there's something I don't like, I can hopefully change it. Primarily, it, I, I will say it has been more work and more stress than I ever thought it would be. Um, one of the harder things I've ever done. And, uh, you know, I've played sports my mm -hmm. entire life, you know, PT school. I was, I was mm -hmm. in two branches of the military, uh, owning your own business. I have two, two young children. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't know. It's a tie between the business and the children. They're, okay. they're equally about as hard <laughs> and, and as challenging. And you, you never know if you're doing something right or wrong. Um, it's, I, I tell people frequently, like, um, you need what I call entrepreneur stamina. Right. Like people have no idea how physically and mentally straining going through this process is. The, the mental. And, and you're right. So the, the first the first few years I, I worked, I was at the clinic treating probably about 
I don't know, somewhere around 80 hours a week. Um, but then outside of it, you know, doing notes, reading business books, um, where I, I read a, a ton, um, going to courses either for business or to improve myself as a clinician. Um, and I just, I, I did that any chance I got because I was afraid, you know, that, that fear, you, you have to put up your, your house, your life savings, you're, you're risking your, your name, you're risking, you know, if, mm-hmm. if I, if I'm in a small area, I want to stay living in this area. Um, you know, you, you kind of have to make it or, or not. And it's, it's very stressful in that regard. So I, I poured everything I could into it to make sure it didn't fail. So how was that balance? Because your wife is, you and your wife are both in it, right? So <laughs> now it's not just one of you and the other one has a nine to five, but both of you are stuck in this entrepreneur. It's, I mean, you're in a do or die, like, if this doesn't work, it's both of our salaries, right. not just one. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, it's awful. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. uh, don't start a business with your wife, okay. with your spouse. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know if I, I think most of the people, most of the people out there seem to know this. I, mm-hmm. I didn't know this ahead of time. I, I thought I could be one of the exceptions. Mm-hmm. Um, and to my wife's credit, I'll, I'll give my wife a little plug here. Um, we opened the business four weeks after our second child mm-hmm. was born. We were driving home. She was in the hospital. And again, I couldn't do anything for the business. Right. So she's in the hospital after delivery talking to some of the contractors. We drive home. We stop at our landlord's place to pick out carpet and uh, <laughs> carpet samples. Right. Um, four weeks after our child's born, she's this business is up, and she's the one that's running it for, for seven months. Wow. Um, so good job, Danielle. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Uh, and, and it, finally, I was able to get there to help her out, you know, seven, eight months in. But okay. um, and, and so you talk about that entrepreneur mindset. There's your entrepreneur mindset mm-hmm. where it doesn't matter. You are never not at work. Um, Correct. You go to bed at night thinking about your business. You wake up at night thinking about your business. You wake up in the morning thinking about your business. Mm-hmm. And th- that, that turning, maybe the biggest thing that I learned is that it is super hard to turn that off. Yes. And it, you're, you're afraid to turn it off. You're afraid to turn it off, especially when you're small, because it, you, you might fail. Um, you're afraid to turn it off be, uh, because if you stop, then the, the business suffers a little bit. I, yeah. I've, I've come out in and out of the business a little bit over the past few years trying to take some time off. And unfortunately, it's still been at the point where if I'm not there, things aren't quite the same. And, and I bet you a lot, of the, oh, yeah. a lot of the employees would say for the better. Uh, um, <laughs> um, but unfortunately, it's, like, it's also been for, for worse. It's when uh, my employees come up and say, um, when are you going when golfing? When are you going on vacation? <laughs> yeah, right. When are you going to go away for a day? Yeah. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you need to take a vacation <laughs> yes. because that's a vacation yes. for us. Yeah. You, you need to take vacation because you're nicer when you come back was what mm-hmm. someone actually told me here. I was like, I, could, I can see that because being in it all the time is absolutely draining. It's it's draining. It's a good it's a good way to put it because it's just never ending. Um, I'm getting better at it, um, but we're we're seven years in, coming up on eight in in June, um, getting to the point where things are a little bit more established. Okay. Um, but it's still hard to let that go, um, and and even even when I'm not at work, you know, it's hard to let that go, not thinking about it, and then. Then you finally you do you know think about it you say well well what the hell am I going to do with my life now what what <laughs> what do I have for the last seven years I've only had the business and right. and the children and and my wife um, so now I need to find things to take my mind off it right like a hobby like a hobby <laughs> um, so I decided to write a book about the about <laughs> about the thing I'm trying to forget right that's yeah. a that's a good hobby yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, uh, you know, I, something. Sometimes I don't make smart decisions. That's uh, okay. But, Sam, my my office manager, my business manager would, I she would, she would very much appreciate hearing that. <laughs> well, I'm sure she will now. <laughs> so, but um, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. This was, and, uh, this was great. This was very interesting, and thank you everybody for tuning in.